This afternoon, we are joined by Salman Khan, founder and CEO of Khan Academy. It's a nonprofit educational organization focused on helping under-resourced areas, which have been hit hard during the pandemic. Khan Academy is now working with 200 school districts, up from nine before the pandemic. Downloads of Khan Academy Kids have grown by 150% during the pandemic. And since last May, more than 50,000 teachers have created accounts on Khan Academy Kids. Sal, thank you so much for joining us. It's good to see you. Great to be here. Now that we are over one year in from the pandemic, what's the verdict on online learning? Well, there's still more data to have. Uh, to be clear, it hasn't been optimal. I'm sometimes associated with online learning and, and di distance learning, but I'll be the first to say, uh, if I had to pick between amazing teacher and amazing technology, I'd pick the amazing teacher every time. But there have been pockets where kids have continued to be able to learn, in some cases, learn quite well. But we also know that 10 to 15 percent of the population of students has just kind of fallen off the radar. And those are the ones that everyone is most worried about. Those are the ones we're most worried about. There's probably another 30 percent of students who have stayed engaged to some degree, but maybe they didn't have proper supports at home or proper Internet access or just distance learning didn't work well for them. Uh, they've also fallen behind, and we're seeing that in test scores. So I think the name of the game now is how do we treat this as disaster recovery? How do we go in there, make sure students have opportunities to fill in their gaps? That's where hopefully Khan Academy can play a role. Started another not-for-profit called schoolhouse.world for free tutoring. Anyone listening can actually volunteer to be a tutor of kids around the world, or anyone who's a learner can go get free tutoring. Uh, so it's these types of supports in conjunction with school districts and states that we think can, can make a positive dent. So what would you say are the biggest learnings that, that can inform how you can do that outreach that is needed for those that need it most and, and engage kids that also need it most that might not be doing the best job when it comes to learning online? Yeah, one of the really interesting things about this whole you know, distance learning of the past year is a lot of the questions we should have always been asking about education are finally being asked. When kids show up on a video conference, everyone says, well, they're getting disengaged. We don't know how to hold their attention. And it turns out that there's just a higher bar when they're at home than when you're in a classroom and you physically have them. So people are saying, instead of giving a lecture, make it interactive, leverage breakouts, actually allow the kids to talk to each other, to work on projects or to explain things to each other. Those are the best practices in the virtual realm, and they're also the best practice in the physical realm. So I hope that some of the learnings that we've gotten from distance learning are going to be operative when we get back. I think people now will also appreciate how special it is to be in a room together. And so they're not going to just lecture at each other, make it non-interactive. They'll say, hey, if human beings are in a room together, let's leverage this opportunity to actually interact with each other, to actually socialize, to actually leverage the human connection. When you look at your growth uh, over the last year, it's been uh, phenomenal uh, for, for obvious reasons, and, and congrats on that. Do you see that as continuing, or is it more a case of, of hoping that things kind of stay where they are in terms of, of where you've got to over the last year? Yeah, it's an interesting trend. Right when the pandemic was hitting and you had the physical school closures, we saw a massive spike. We saw 300% of normal. Normal times, we see about 30 million learning minutes per day during a school day. We saw that get up to about 80, 85, 90 million learning minutes per day. There's been an interesting phenomenon as we went through the school year. And this isn't a Khan Academy phenomenon. This is actually a school phenomena. We've talked to a lot of school leaders. They're having time getting as much instructional delivery as they normally would. Uh, but even with that, we saw 12 billion learning minutes in 2020. I suspect when we go back, there could actually be an even larger increase because everyone is talking about the need for students to fill in gaps, the needs to uh, make sure that they don't fall off track. And one of the ways to do it when you're a teacher with 30 kids, instead of moving them all lockstep, you leverage tools like Khan Academy, leverage schools like tools like schoolhouse.world. These are free. These are not for profit over 50 efficacy studies on them to show that it really moves the dial for kids.